Ooh, bold statement. Did you read the title? I know, I know, but you gotta hear me out. Well, the title, it, it says a lot, and probably one of the most questions that I get in the comments down below is, is this a good truck to buy? Or should I buy this? Or what's the best truck to buy? Well, there's not a one size fits all when it comes to this question. And understand what I'm about to go over in this video is, is extremely, extremely sound advice. But it's not going to pertain to everyone because everybody has different situations. You know, there's different applications for the truck that you're looking for. Uh, you're running it in different areas. There are so many factors that are involved that it's impossible for me to just make one video and to answer everybody's question. This is the perfect truck. So I've been thinking about this and thinking about this and you know, this, this channel's been running for about three years and I've come up with kind of the best way to buy a truck and understand that no matter what you do, when buying a truck, the trucking industry, you know, new owner operators, it has a very low success rate. It's just, it, it, it's just the way that it is. But if we were to take away kind of all of the factors that are involved, like how much money and how much is the truck and yada, 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 taking all of those questions out of the equation and looking at this, like, is there one specific way that you can purchase a truck that is gonna give you the highest success rate well, that's what this video is gonna go over. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. When you're looking for a truck, you know, there's, <laughs> there's so many different factors. The place that you should start is, you know, what kind of freight are you gonna be hauling and where are you gonna be hauling it? That's, that's, a, that's a nice place to start. There's many different places to start, but that's kind of where you want to uh, put your focus, put your attention on. and. When you can answer those questions, and if you can't answer those questions, and it's honestly, it's probably not time to buy a truck, but if you can answer those questions and you can get yourself, uh, you can get the basics answered. What engine do I want to run? You know, do I want to run a, a, a flat top, a mid roof, you know, a full size truck, you know, a long wheelbase, short wheelbase, you get the idea. When you get that, well, where do you go next? You know, do you buy a new truck? Do you go to a dealership? You know, do you buy it from someone? You know, do you go to auction? There are so many different ways to do this that there's no one perfect answer, okay? You, you just, you have to understand that. And, and the thing is, I cannot answer these questions for you, okay? But if I were to, to start over, this is what I would do. I would find an owner operator that is selling his truck. I fully believe that that is the best way to purchase a truck. Now just hold on, I know you wanna race down in the comments and put it and give us, give us your opinion because somebody out there has purchased from an owner operator and it blew up the next week. I get it, I get it. it these trucks are time bombs, you know, at any given point, anything can happen. You can blow your injectors, you can, you know, I mean, it's just anything. I'm not gonna get into all that. but. Understand that since there's no perfect way to buy a truck, not even a new truck, new trucks have issues too. I fully believe that the highest rate of success is to buy from an owner operator. Now, any owner operator? No, not any, not just any owner operator. If you are looking, actually, let me give you a little bit of background. So let's say you're looking for uh, a 2016 Freightliner Cascadia, okay? That's, that's your dream truck, that's the one that you wanna run, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if that's what you're looking to run, you cannot look at trucks like you're buying a car, okay? And what I mean by that is, you know, when you're searching for a car, you're searching for the best deal. And you're looking for, essentially, not, maybe not necessarily the cheapest price, but the, but, you know, that's certainly gonna be part of the equation. When you're looking to buy a truck, the cheapest price is, is not gonna be, probably, not gonna be the best deal that you're gonna get on the truck. 
when you're looking at a truck, stuff like chrome, you know, stuff like that visor that I put on this truck, those things do not increase the value of the truck, at least not, not up front, not directly. When you go to, you know, I, the reason I can say this is because I used to sell cars, I, I know. You know, when you're, when you're selling a, a, a car and they've got, you know, an upgraded stereo system in it, they've got nicer wheels and tires on it, they've done all, the, all of the, the things that, you know, kind of make it look cooler or make the car cooler, those do not add value to the car. In the same way with trucks, to an extent, of course, but to an extent, all of these aesthetic upgrades, they really don't mean anything. What means something on trucks are the bones of the truck. And what I mean by that is, is, is the engine. How well is the engine operating? The transmission, you know, the rear ends, the mechanical parts of the truck that actually allow you to make money. And the more of these things that are, you know, either maintained or have been recently replaced, that is actually what increases the value of a truck. And, you know, like things like truck paper, they're getting better, at least some of them are. Uh, some of the, the people that post or some of the businesses that post on there, they're getting better at kind of assessing what it is that owner operators truly are looking for. And be it if it's, you know, if it's like the, the car or the truck has a new turbo or the engine's been rebuilt, they're starting to add those things into the, into the description because they understand that with the internet nowadays, that people's knowledge is, is much, um, much, much bigger than what it used to be in the past. And it used to be in the past, you, you'd go to buy a car or a truck. Uh, I mean, they're just selling you the sizzle. And that's what we used to do whenever we sold cars. They're just selling you the sizzle and they're trying to trigger an emotional response from you in order to buy the truck. They're gonna show you things like, check out this paint job. It's a brand new paint job. You know, check out this, this frame. Look how good this frame looks when in reality all they did was paint over it. You know, check out all this chrome. Check out, you know, oh look, it's got air horn. You know, it's got a train horn on it. You know, all of these things are not what you should be looking for when you're buying a truck. You should be looking for what what am I gonna need to replace next? You know, how many miles are on the truck? And how, what is this gonna cost me in the future? What items are kind of on the list that need to be replaced so that way I can keep an eye on them? So I know kind of, you know, you're never gonna know exactly how much you need in the bank, but it's gonna give you an idea as far as, you know, what costs are coming up so you can prepare better, so you can give yourself a higher chance of success. And buying from an owner operator is, is definitely going to do this, at least buying from the, the correct owner operator. Maintenance records are very, very important. And you know, ultimately what you're gonna have to do when you're buying from an owner operator is you're gonna have to decide, can I trust this guy or this gal? That's it, you're gonna have to decide that. If you feel like you cannot trust that person, don't buy the truck from them, plain and simple. It doesn't matter if that is the truck for you, that is the one that you want. If you can't trust them, then do not buy the truck from them. And if they're trying to sell you on, you know, look how polished these tanks are and, and look how, you know, look how, I've got eight inch Lincoln Chrome stacks on it and look how nice they are and they're trying to sell you the sizzle, you probably want to stay away from them. But if they're telling you things like, it's got a brand new turbo on it, you know, it's got a reman clutch on it that we just put on it about 50,000 miles ago, it's working great. If they're, if they're trying to sell you on mechanical things or, or the, you know, how the truck has been maintained, now that, that is an owner operator worth listening to and probably worth buying from. You know, it, and a person that has driven a truck for an extended amount of time is gonna have a very good idea of kind of the quirks of the truck and, and what, you know, kind of what the problems are of the truck. And while I'm gonna say this is, is it's highly, highly unlikely that the truck is in perfect condition, 
okay, perfect working order, like you don't have to do anything to this truck, I would, I would be extremely skeptical. I'm not gonna say don't buy from that person because it's, it, that's certainly, it's a possibility. But it's so unlikely that the truck is in perfect shape when they're going to try to sell it that I would just be very, 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 very careful. And that owner operator should be able to tell you things like, you know, fuel mileage, things like, you know, this is what, you know, this is what to look out for when you reach a certain mileage or, or going down the road. If you hear this noise coming from this direction, it probably means this. You know, I was going to replace this part on the truck, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. You know, you might want to look into that in the next 50,000 miles. Those are the type of conversations that you really want to have with owner operators when you're looking to buy the truck. And I'm gonna tell you, the, the, I touched on this a little bit earlier, I meant to go a little bit deeper on it. The cheaper the price not necessarily means the better the truck. When you're looking at that 2016 Cascadia and engines are the same and mileage is roughly the same and you're looking at one that's, and I'm just shooting a figure out there, I have no idea what they're worth right now. But you're looking at one that's 35,000, you're looking at another one that's 55,000 don't dismiss the one that's 55,000 just because it's a higher price. Now, if they can't justify that higher price, if it doesn't have things like new injectors, new turbo, new clutch, brand new brakes, brand new rubber, if it doesn't have uh, you know things like that that actually justify that $20,000 difference, eh, I'd probably stay away from it. But it's worth looking into, it's worth asking, why is that truck worth, worth 55,000 when this one's only listed at 35,000. It's probably a, a gross difference in the maintenance that was done on the trucks. And that's why you see such discrepancies when, you know, looking at the trucks. A good friend of mine, he bought a Cascadia a few months before I bought this one. And he got he kind of went after one, you know, one of those, the lowest price trucks. And, you know, to be honest, back at that time, I thought, man, you know, he got a good deal on it. That's, that was my thought. That was his thought. In the first year, he put somewhere between like 60 and $70,000 into that truck, bringing it back up to par. Now that's, this is not gonna be the case for everyone, but it was certainly the case, you know, for him, and it almost broke him. It, it, it almost broke him. It didn't, and he's basically done everything to the truck except, I think, the lower half of a rebuild. Or no, 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 maybe the upper half, the upper half of a rebuild. That's it, and maybe injectors. That's it. Other, other than that, that truck is basically brand new. So there's so many different things to consider when buying a truck that you don't wanna just run out and buy the truck. When I went and bought my truck, I bought it from Lone Mountain, okay? There were circumstances why, I've got videos on it, why I did it in the past, not gonna go into it on this one, but I went and bought mine from Lone Mountain. I got there first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, you know, we did whatever we did and about an hour later, I was out in the parking lot crawling all over this thing. I was pulling parts off of the truck in the middle of the parking lot. My salesman came out to me, he's like, hey man, don't shoot the messenger, but my manager wanted me to tell you to stop pulling parts off the truck. I told him, I said, if you want me to buy this truck, you're gonna let me do whatever it is that I need to do, aside from a rebuild out here in the middle. He said, just, just don't shoot the messenger. I said, all right, man, I'm not taking anything off that's too important. <laughs> but the point is, the completion of my sale took literally all day, all day long. While I was there, three other trucks were sold that day, at least that I'm aware of. And these three other trucks, not a single person was at that dealership more than two hours. Only one of them popped the hood, one. The others didn't even pop the hood. They got, they got sold on the sizzle. They got sold on the excitement of owning their own truck and buying their own truck. 
when you hear nightmare stories, you know, on YouTube about, well, I bought this from this owner operator and this didn't work out well, or I bought it, I bought this truck from Lone Mountain and it wound up blowing up on me. Keep in mind, that's probably what you're dealing with. I know some of you remember, you know, Daniel McCarthy and, you know, he had a very unfortunate experience with Lone Mountain. You know, his truck blew up on him and I know that he's at least, at least pretty mechanically inclined. You know, I don't know to the, to the level extent of what his knowledge base is, but for the most part, he, he's, he can work on his truck. He, he can work on, you know, his reefer that he had. And even still, it still wound up, you know, basically putting him out of business. So just understand, you know, buying a truck is rolling a dice. You're rolling the dice. There is nothing that's guaranteed out here, and it, and it doesn't matter if you buy a new truck or if you buy a used truck. New trucks have problems too. I've said this many times on different videos that you can buy a brand new truck from a dealership, roll it across the scale a few miles up the road, and if they inspect that truck, DOT can find something wrong with that truck. So that should really open your eyes to the gravity of the situation. No matter what you do, there are going to be issues that are gonna come up you know, with these trucks. And you gotta keep in mind that you're not buying a car, you're buying a truck. When you go to buy a car, if, if you have an issue within the first three years, you're kind of, you know, most people would be irritated, like, I bought a bad car. Well, the average mileage that's driven across the United States is about 12,000 miles. 12,000, so in three years, that's only 36,000 miles. We do that in three months. Three months. In three months, we're putting three years worth of mileage that you get, that you're used to on cars. So that's why it's so important to have money set back or to have access to funds that, that in, in order to fix your truck. That's why it's so imperative. That's why you can't just save up for a down payment, run out, spend your whole wad on the down payment, and then expect to make money. Some people do that but they're exceptions to the rules. They're not, that, that is not how it generally works out here. You cannot think, well, my buddy did this, so I can do it. You can't think like that. You have to look at the industry as a whole. You know, as a whole, what is the percentage of guys that go and buy trucks with no, no extra money other than a down payment that actually stay in business? The answer is about one out of 10, maybe. That's a random number, no, I don't know that for a fact, but I do know that the success rate for the first three years is one out of 10. Those odds are pretty low. Can it be done? Absolutely it can be done. But you have to use this up here. You have to use this up here, you cannot get caught in the chrome and the lights and the air horns and all the cool stuff that comes along with owning that truck. You have to look at the bones. And I feel like the best way to have an accurate assessment of how the bones actually are on the truck are to buy it from an owner operator that knows that truck inside and out. You know, I'm sorry, but these fleets that are running these trucks, they don't know that truck from Adam. You go and buy it from a dealership, you're not gonna get the maintenance records, usually, sometimes you can. But you also have to keep in mind that an owner operator is going to, he's going to maintain that truck to the best of his ability. You know, when things are starting to go out, he's gonna replace them. He's gonna be proactive rather than a deal, or than a, uh, uh, you know, one of these larger carriers out here, they are reactive. And that's because the majority of them, not all of them, but the majority of them lease these trucks. So all they're trying to do is make it to the end of that lease while putting the least amount of money into that truck while keeping the warranty intact. That's their goal. The least amount of money that they can do, that they can put into that truck to make sure that their bottom line is where it needs to be. 
where an owner operator doesn't operate like that. So that's why I feel the best way to buy a truck is to buy it from an owner operator. There are many different ways to buy a truck, so understand, you know, this is not this is not the only advice that you're ever going to need, but I have to title these these videos like this to catch attention. I have to. Otherwise nobody'll click on it. So, understand that my titles usually match my videos, but they're not always a perfect match. But anyway, if you've made it this far in the video, I greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you enjoyed the video, click that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. I've been putting a ton of videos out lately and that is going to continue forward. Check out one of these videos right over here. Greatly appreciate you, but as always, stay driven.